Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We are exploring Romans for the next few weeks. And specifically, we are looking in, in our devotion this week at Paul's struggle with his brother and sisters, his, his fellow Jews, and their failure to respond to the gospel message. And that causes him to look back at their history with God and where they went off the track over and over and over again. Certainly lamenting and being, you know, wanting to see them grab hold of a real relationship with God, but also sharing it with the church in Rome of this is what not to do. That you can't just be hearers of the word and take on the trappings of religion without making a true commitment to a relationship with God. And that's where the Jews of Paul's day are getting it wrong. That's where the Israelites have gotten it wrong since very early on in their relationship with God. And for you and I, that's where we can get it wrong. So we're starting today in Romans 10. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. So instead of seeking God, they have built this industry around worshiping God and, and in a way of following the rules. And if we just follow these rules, then... Our counts will be settled, we'll come out ahead, we'll have done more good than, than, than bad, and that'll make God happy. Well, God says several times to the Israelites in the Old Testament that he's not interested in all of the, the, uh, the uh, worship part, the, the, the temple, the sacrifices, the, the animal sacrifices, and all of the the trappings, he's after the Israelites' hearts. He desires for them to recognize who he is and respond by allowing him to transform their lives. We too are susceptible to the trappings of our religion. If you go into a Christian bookstore, the, the shelves are filled with self-help books. Now, prayerfully, some, if not many, are tied to God's word, but we become worshipers of the authors that write all of these books that are based on the Bible, but filled with their own wisdom. Instead of seeking a, a relationship with God, now, we are comfortable around the trappings of our religion, and, it, and perhaps there is absolutely nothing wrong. I love a good Lifeway bookstore. But if that replaces a relationship with God and recognizing who he is and choosing to live a life that glorifies him by staying within the boundaries, he says, then we too are kind of moving off in a, in a similar direction as the Israelites. We must, our love of God and our zeal for God must not be for the trappings of religion, but focused on our relationship with God through Jesus. Where were the Israelites missing out? They weren't seeing that God's plan was to extend tremendous grace. 
It wasn't by our doing. It wasn't found in some secret ceremony. It was found in Jesus Christ. We must remain focused on God's word and what he desires to do by his grace and his plan, seeking his will. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. I think that's probably what frustrated Paul the most in all of this, is that he witnessed his brothers and sisters, his, his fellow Jews, continuing on in their religion, and much of their life was patterned around that religion, yet they were not able to truly anchor themselves in a relationship with God. Meanwhile, he is called to be the apostle to the unwashed masses. And when he shares the gospel message and the story of Jesus, they respond in a major way. And their lives are truly transformed. And he's witnessing that transformation, then looks back to his own people and sees they're moving off in a false direction. Those things can happen in modern church as well as we spend our entire lifetimes in church around the trappings of our religion. And yet God chooses a mission field of people that have never heard the gospel message and they respond. Even the the people of the church can, can see that how they're responding and how their lives are transformed and the faith that they are demonstrating is much different than our own. Maintaining our zeal for God is essential. We've been speaking of faith for several weeks, but reminding ourselves that it's not the trappings of religion, but a real relationship with God based on submission and the willingness to follow Jesus where we will find our real home. Let's not make the same mistakes that the Israelites made. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for drawing us in. We thank you, Lord, for fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for our churches where we feel at home and feel your peace. We thank you, Lord, for our favorite hymns. We thank you, Lord, for our favorite worship songs. We thank you, Lord, for all of the things that come with being part of a church family. But Lord, we pray today that those would not supplant a real relationship with you. That our eyes would remain upon you. And the reason for all of the our worship is, is in thanks to you. We often fall in love with the show, but forget to go. We pray, Lord, that you would do a real work in our hearts today. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us of the sacrifice and of your grace and your willingness to forgive and invite us in. Help us never lose track of you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. See you tomorrow morning. We will continue with the story of the Israelites and prayerfully take some tips from their journey and apply it to ours.
I love you. I miss you. Till we see each other again, be good.